friend who has a 50th birthday coming up in a couple of days. And so I'd like to make something special for her. I make a lot of birthday cards. So I've got this piece of watercolor paper. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure to the center of this so that I can score it and fold it in half into a card. So take your ruler, um, keep it uh, parallel to the, the side that you're measuring on and then measure off where the center is. So I've got about uh, five and five eighths of an inch here. And then just take another spot further up the paper and mark that. And so what we're gonna take is take the ruler, match up those two little tick marks and I'll often stand up when I'm working with an X-Acto knife and I'm lining the ruler up on the two tick marks. And what I'm going to do is just score the paper. So just break the top few layers of it. So just gently go across, depending on how sharp your blade is. You don't want to push too hard. And then what you can do, now that you've broken that top layer, you can certainly erase the pencil marks that are in the spine you want to and then if you score it from the center you'll get a nice clean fold like that and now we can start to make a card now there is some edges here that aren't good so I'm going to cut that all off I've decided since she's going to be 50 I'm going to take this card and uh, block out the letters five zero and make that into her card. Uh, cut it all out. Kind of neat die cut. Zero. And, and I've left this extra edge on it. So kind of like, uh, it's not a deco edge, but the inside of the card is a little bit larger. I'm going to color, whatever I color from here is gonna go into this band. So then that band of color is also going to show on the side of the card. Got a piece of scrap paper here. Going to move my cutting board and ruler out of the way, off to the side, wherever you like to keep that sort of stuff. And I'm going to put my scrap paper down. Um, I think what I'd like to do with this card is work with oil pastels. So putting both of them together, I can certainly find enough colors. The reason you want to put a scrap paper underneath is oil pastels, if you've ever worked with them, can get a little messy. Definitely is going to get on your hands and it's going to uh, leave little pieces, little burrs. And so you want to have something on the table to catch that so that you don't make a mess of your table. I'm just going to randomly select colors and put in splashes. I'm gonna stay in the area of the 50. Maybe what I'll do is just give it a quick outline here with, I think I'll use a gray. Get a clear definition of where the five and the zero are divided each digit. So there you can see, maybe that's easier to see if I put that against my sweater. And I am getting warm and I'm gonna work and get messy. So I'm going to definitely this hot sweater off put that aside so it doesn't get all full with paint and just going to continue um, randomly choosing colors and filling up the the two shapes the five and the zero so just splashes of color everywhere here all over the place just going to continue with that what I love about oil pastels is the way you can blend the colors together. So the friction and the heat from the coloring will blend the colors. If you overlap, let's say this blue onto the yellow here, you're going to change that into a green. So here you can see how that's changing. I'll just get a closer look at that. So you can see where the yellow is overlapping, it's turning into green. So you're going to be a little bit on a discovery here, an adventure, let's say, of what is going to happen to each of these colors when you mix them together with another color.
definitely you want to be careful in the area of the black because black is quite overpowering and it will definitely take that uh, that color whatever it is you're coloring and make it dirty looking pretty good I'm getting there almost got all the spots filled up I think I'm going to put some red in the missing spots and I'm quite happy with how colorful it is. Wow, it's looking great. So another thing is when you get these little bits of color that are stuck to your pastel and you want to clean that off, what you can do is just go to a blank area of your page and just draw a few lines and then remove those other colors that are stuck to it, especially for yellow and white and things like that. And that will do um, clean off the ends for you so that you have just yellow again. So a good idea to do that from time to time. Not so critical in a drawing like this where we're just blending random colors together, but definitely if you were working on a face or something that is much more detail where you need specific colors in specific areas, then it is definitely critical to clean off your pastels. So I've got an orange one here. We're going to add some more orange and we're almost done. Here we go. The 50 is all colored in. And so we are still get all these little burrs. So I carefully just clean them off with my fingers and move them off the board. And if you get your fingers covered in oil pastels, which they will get kind of messy, just have a rag nearby and you can just clean your fingers off so that they're a little cleaner. You can always go wash them, obviously, with warm water and soap if it's really bothering you to have it on there. So I'm going to clean all the burrs off that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scribe into this design. So you can use, this is actually a tool from uh, breaking nuts open, uh, anything that's sharp that has an end on it. You can use a pencil, maybe without, uh, like this is one of those mechanical pencils where you don't have the lead sticking out. So I'm going to show you what I can do with that. So we can just, because the oil pastel is a layer, we can actually just scribe into it. So let's say I can draw a nice cool heart in there. So I can draw different shapes into the oil pastel, maybe write a message in it. And that just is going to add some, another dimension to it. Here we go. A little bit like the old Etch-A-Sketch. There I put in the word amazing, a balloon, hearts, the number 50, more balloons and hearts, and wow, and 50. I will sometimes uh, spray just a um, light coating on the top of this, either um, a fixative or a, uh, a lacquer spray, just a watercolor one. Now... I've noticed if you turn it over that the back of the card has now confetti all over it. So we're just going to go with it, leave it clean, clean off the bits a little bit. And if I open it up, you can see the inside has a little bit of confetti on it too. And it has the nice colorful bar on the edge. I don't know if I have an envelope to fit it. Uh, if not, I might have to make an envelope. That'll be another lesson. Fabulous at 50 and uh, the card is pretty much complete other than the inscription, the personal message that I want to put on the inside. So just a fabulously quick way of putting together a special card that's handmade, super colorful, super fun. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends and make your own card. And if you have any questions just yet, yeah, please put them in the message below and I'd be happy to help you with your birthday cards. See you again soon.